what's up everybody? So on the table today, we've got a centrifugal supercharger, a twin screw supercharger, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences in turbo and what's better and when. So we're also gonna have some Christmas related stuff. So if you're not interested in the Christmas related stuff and you're a Grinch, just go to the timestamp in the video and you can bypass all that and go straight to this. All right, buddy. Uh, what are you doing here with this uh, track hawk? I'm just doing a final inspection, make sure all bolts are tight. Um, looking over all the paint marks, make sure nothing moved. Um, that's about it, honestly. Just making sure nothing's hitting, make sure everything looks good. So then we could uh, I believe it's, this is leaving on Thursday, and it is on Tuesday, yeah. So. Uh, what else has to be done to it after your inspection? Uh, after the inspection, I'm basically just gonna have uh, Brenton put a few tacks on the on the exhaust so it doesn't move around whenever the customer receives it. We don't know where, where it's going. Sometimes it goes a really rocky and crappy road, so um, you want to make sure everything's nice and, and not going to move at all so it doesn't touch or hit or anything. Did you struggle with this car at all? And if so, why? Of course not, baby. All right, now that Brent's done welding the exhaust on this track hog, we're gonna go out to the container with my boy Nate here and get some goodies for Christmas. Christmas time. Brother, tell me what you see, brother. I see black and a skeleton dog. Where are you, Christmas? Look at this dog. Where's that dog? <laughs> Grab a handful of that. Oh my God. Can we sing Christmas songs? You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. I sold my car for a very low price. This here is the Super Hauler Indoor Tamer, or shortly known as Shit. <laughs> Reverse entry. <laughs> All right. You don't gotta leave, but you can't stay here. We gotta decorate. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. Okay, so me and Logan are here. We got a few different things on the table. I do not have a turbo here, but I'm gonna talk about it in general. So we get a lot of inquiries about um, what is best. Is it a supercharger? Is it a turbo? What kind of supercharger? So I'm just gonna kind of go over briefly um, the differences between them. And you know, I, I can't say that any one is ultimately better. They all have their pros and cons. So let's go over a few of the different ones. Um, so right now on the table, this is just what we had laying around the shop. So. Um, this is a Hellcat supercharger and this is a Pro Charger. So um, basically these are both superchargers. This is a centrifugal supercharger and this is a twin screw supercharger. So centrifugal, um, let's just go over this first. So centrifugal is basically like a belt driven turbo, okay? Um, so I'm gonna show you the back of it. The front looks very much exactly like a turbo. And then on the back side, you see a pulley uh, that is driven off the crankshaft. So companies like uh, Pro Charger, Vortec, they make centrifugal superchargers. They're both really good brands. They do have slight differences, but fundamentally they're basically the same. Um, so they make uh, a lot of top end power. Um, as far as like bottom end torque, they're a little bit slower. So that ramps in slower than like a twin screw supercharger. They're both have their pros and cons. So centrifugal supercharger is gonna probably in most cases have more top end power, okay? Um, a twin screw supercharger is gonna have more bottom end torque. Um, so if you have a heavier vehicle, um, like a truck or a Hellcat, um, you might have better luck with this. You're gonna need torque to get that heavy weight moving off the line. If you have a lighter car like a Mustang or a Corvette or something where you don't need as much torque, sometimes the centrifugal is better. And then there's also, you have to take into account um, whatever the engine bay looks like, how much space you have, how much hood clearance you have. 
Um, there's several different variables to come into play. This particular intake is just sitting here. This is like an LT1, LT4 um, intake from Pro Charger that goes on a new GM platforms, um, and it goes with their Pro Charger. Cool. Twin screw, this is kind of what you see a lot on production-based vehicles. It's a little bit more self-contained, um, less pieces in this. Um, it's easier for auto manufacturers to kind of go with this route. Um, on like a Hellcat that's a heavier vehicle. Um, so this kind of is a little bit more advantageous. IHI makes this, um, which is the same supercharger manufacturer that does all the AMG superchargers. So Daimler, Chrysler, they're all tied in with Mercedes. So that's why the Hellcat went with this type of supercharger in the first place. When you get into this type of supercharger, you basically have two different styles and they look very similar, but in, in functionality, they're very different. So the Hellcat uses a twin screw supercharger um, and you have another version that's more like a root supercharger, which has been around for a long time. Um, all the older cars, you'd see that. So if you look at the cases, they're very, very similar looking. But if you look at the way they actually work internally, they're, they're actually quite different. Basically, the easiest way to explain the differences is on a twin screw. Um, if you looked at the two rotor packs, um, they screw together. Okay, so they're, they're screwing into each other. So this particular supercharger has a snout taken off of it. So air would come in through the throttle body through the front of it, and the air would come in through the screws. And as it comes through, the screws would take it and squeeze the air in between the two screws and compress it, and it would come out through the lid and then down through two intercooler bricks into the engine. So where the air is, the compressed air is actually in between the two screws. So there's not a lot of surface area for it to get heated up by. Um, if you look at a root style supercharger, like an Eaton, um, a Magnuson. So Magnuson is an Eaton core. So they're, they're all basically the same. And they have come a long way over the years. So now you have like what's called like a hybrid roots. So they've done a lot of changes over the original root style to make it more efficient. But it, the main difference is if you looked at the two screws, they screw away from each other. So it pulls in air and it rolls the air around the outside of the case of the supercharger and then down into the engine. Um, the reason why it's a little bit less efficient is because the tolerances are, are much less, so that supercharger is easier to make, um, it's cheaper to machine, um, but the air is exposed to the entire exterior case of the supercharger. So that inadvertently allows it to heat up more because the case is hot. So it's been around for a long time. They have made improvements to make it more efficient. Um, there's kind of a lot of controversy of which one is better, which one is not. If you look at strictly physics, the twin screw is going to beat out the root style, um, but there's a lot of variables that come into, um, into play. But functionality, they kind of, they're, they're very, very similar. So then you have like a turbocharger. Um, so a turbocharger has basically the most potential for overall power. And that's because it takes the least amount of power away from the engine to turn. So this Hellcat supercharger, for instance, if the Hellcat is basically at redline and this supercharger is taking about 80 horsepower away from the engine to drive this supercharger at redline. So it's consuming a lot of power in order to turn the supercharger to make power, okay? Um, so obviously that's not the most advantageous. Um, you know, a centrifugal is a little bit less, they're a little bit more efficient. But again, they lack the bottom end torque because this thing is strictly dependent on engine RPM, where this is instantaneous boost. So you hit the pedal, the bypass valve closes, you have full boost immediately. This on the other hand, it takes engine RPM to build up boost more like a turbo. And it, it just can, it can only produce as much as the engine is, is spinning. So um, top end wise, this is better. Um, bottom end wise, this is better. Both these price-wise are pretty comparable. Um, so to do a supercharger setup like this and this, it's gonna be much more economical than a turbo setup. Um, reason being is because a turbo system has much more components. It's not so self-contained. A lot of times it takes a lot of custom fabrication to make it work. Um, and there's not a lot of like kits per se, like you have with Pro Charger or companies like Whipple or Magnuson and stuff like that. Um, so power-wise, the one that's most beneficial if you strictly want the most amount of power is gonna be a turbocharger. Um, for a few reasons. Number one, the turbocharger is the most efficient. So it runs off exhaust gases. So much like this centrifugal supercharger, instead of relying on a belt from the crankshaft driving it, it's relying on exhaust gases to turn a turbine, 
which in turn turns an impeller to produce boost. Um, so the exhaust gas is just a byproduct of the engine. And so you're not robbing, um, it does rob a little bit of power, but very incremental, much far less than fewer of these two options. Um, so the turbocharger is just more expensive route to go. So if you're looking for the absolute most amount of power and you don't care about price or the complexity of the system, a turbocharger setup is gonna be the most advantageous. If you're looking for the most bang for the buck, um, one of these two are probably gonna suit you better. And then you have to also factor in like, what are you gonna actually do with the car? And you know, if you're shooting for 1400 horsepower, obviously that's gonna require to be run on full-time race gas. So um, if you are not going to run on gas, that's 12 to $15 a gallon. And you know, a turbocharger setup might be a lot more money for something that you're not ever gonna actually achieve because the limitation is gonna be the gas that you're gonna be running as opposed to the force induction setup that you're gonna be running. So a lot of different things come into play. So if you're looking for a package, we can help you know, plan out what makes the most sense, but this is just the basic fundamental differences of them. And just some things like, you know, what fuel are you gonna run? What are you gonna actually be doing with the car? What's your budget? As far as what's the smartest route to take. So basically that pretty much sums it up as far as I can tell. You have any, anything? No, that makes a lot of sense. So what would you say, um, puts the most wear on the engine compared to the two? Like turbocharged or supercharged? Most wear? Um, I don't really know, honestly. I mean, I don't think, um, as far as wear on the engine, I think if like a, any of these systems is set up properly, so if you have a turbo set up and you have proper wastegate sizing and wastegate placement, um, that's a big thing, like how the, you know, the exhaust gas is routing toward the wastegate are going. Um, if you have a properly sized blow-off valve, and a blow-off valve, you can't really oversize the blow-off valve. Um, sizing comes much more into play on the wastegate size. Um, but if you have the wastegate placement um, proper, where you're not you know, um, stressing the impeller or the turbo, or potentially putting unneeded stress on the throttle body or the intercooler, depending on where it's located, um, I don't think you're putting really any unneeded stress on the system. Um, you know, these have much more parasitic loss, but again, is it more wear and tear per se on the engine? At the end of the day, kind of boost is boost. How you get it is sort of irrelevant. You know, if it takes more power to get there, um, mostly wear and tear on the engine is from tuning, um, either running too aggressive ignition timing, um, inadequate levels of, uh, you know, octane, which leads to spark knock. That's primarily the main sources of engine wear you're gonna get from any one of these platforms. Right. You know, but. That's pretty much it. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's some things that I didn't cover. So if there's some things that you want to know, um, just leave them in the comments um, and we'd be happy to address it. But this is basically a kind of brief synopsis of the three. We get a lot of questions asked about this all the time. So we just try to cover some basic principles and maybe help you get a better understanding of which, you know, which option might be better for you depending on your car. Leave in the comments, what kind of car do you have? What kind of supercharger force induction system are you most interested in? Is it one of these? Is it turbo? Is it nitrous? Do you have any questions about it? You know, leave them in the comments. That way it gives us some feedback on what kind of information to provide you all to help you with your build. And then, you know, if you have anything, questions that we can answer, we'd be more than happy to try to help you all out. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like the video, if you like this content, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hit the thumbs down, give us some, you know, positive feedback as far as like what you do want to see and we can know, you know, better help you with videos in the future. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again later.